Hello everyone, my name is Asisi Pombingeleli and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video guys, we'll be answering two human evolution questions from previous question papers. So let us go through the question guys. You are having two diagrams here, the diagram A and diagram B, which are basically showing the ventral or the bottom view of the skulls of two organisms. Uh, the diagrams are not drawn to scale. Okay, so which diagram represents the skull of a bipedal organism? One mark. Okay. So which diagram? Is it diagram A or diagram B? Definitely diagram B. Now give one visible reason. Why are you saying diagram B? Is representing a skull of a bipedal organism um, for two marks you're giving one visible reason but it's for two marks um, the foramen magnum is in a more forward position the two marks is at the end so there's the answer therefore the foramen for wow while wow, these the foramen Magnum is in a more forward position. Two maxes at the end. Okay, tabulate two visible differences between the upper jaws in the diagrams A and B. That represents trends in human evolution. So you are not just looking at any difference. You are looking at the upper jaws in the diagrams. Okay. When we tabulate, remember, you need to write down the caption. Um, so this will be a table. Let me see if I'll have space if I can write it. Okay. Okay. That's fine. A table showing differences. Uh, let me see. Let me read the question again. Showing differences between exactly this between the upper jaws of um, diagram A and B. Then you draw your table. There is my table. Remember, you use a pencil and a ruler to draw your table. Then you are having two columns. Each column will have a heading. So column A will be, sorry, column one will be for diagram A. And column two will be for diagram B. Now, with diagram A, since we are focusing on the jaws only, so we can talk about the canines there. Diagram A has larger canines. Various diagram B has smaller canines. Remember, you compare the same characteristic in each row. So this is the row. So we are talking about canines. You can't talk about canines this side. And on the other side, in the same row, you talk about um, whatever, like the shape of the jaw or something like that. No. So then the second row, I am talking about the shape. Um, the jaws with teeth in a rectangular or U-shape. So jaws with teeth in a rectangular or you could have said U-shape, in a U-shape. And then with diagram B, the jaws with teeth on a gentle round curve. So jaws with teeth on a gentle um, or round curve. More protruding jaw. The jaw is more protruding in diagram A. More protruding jaw. Or you could have said um, more prognathus. Uh, I'll just write the word prognathus. 
Okay, then with diagram B, less protruding. Or none prog na there. there you have it. Um the marker location here is five. So guys the first mark will be for the table caption and the table lines. So how this will be marked, there will be an indication, for example, T a tick. So this T is for drawing the table with the caption also so you need those two in order for you to get the mark then um i think they they only asked for two right so yeah that will be four marks for the points then explain the significance of the shape of the spine that is associated with the skull in diagram b how many marks two marks costs and effect explain the significance of the shape of the spine what is the shape of the spine you indicate that shape that is associated with skull B. We're specifically focusing on skull B. So the spine is S-shaped. What is the significance? Okay, let me not rush things. Okay, we are talking about the shape of the spine. The spine is S-shaped. Okay, you get the mark, right? So now tell us the significance of the spine being S-shaped. It actually allows flexibility that will be the, the, the effect now. Flexibility and shock absorption. All right. So uh, a tick maybe, maybe, maybe here on flexibility um, or uh, shock absorption. So how you would get the two marks? One mark for speaking about the shape because that's the one in, in, in question. And then one mark for just saying for flexibility or for shock absorption. So you didn't necessarily have to mention both in this case. All right, let's move to the next question. Let's see. Okay, it's not a lot. Um, the diagrams below represents the pelvic structure in the ventral view of the skulls of three organisms. The diagrams are drawn to scale. So uh, the upper diagrams, it's basically the pelvic, the pelvic structure, the ones on top are representing the pelvic structure, and the one at the bottom um, are representing the ventral view, the bottom view, ventral view. Let's see the question. Um, write down the letter or letters of the diagrams that represent um, skulls of bipedal organism. Let's see. That will be definitely Z and definitely X. So X, and remember it's two marks. It's, it's a giveaway that it, it will definitely be more than one diagram. So X and Z. Then let's our letters of the diagrams that represent the pelvic structure, pelvic structure of a quadrupedal organism. Mm, so with this one, definitely C. Definitely C. Give a reason for your answer to... Um, why we are saying that uh, the diagram that represents the pelvic structure of a quadrupedal organism is a C. Now we need to explain based on what we are seeing in the diagram. So the answer, um, the pelvis is long and narrow for two marks. Okay, we can even write it here. The pelvis is long and narrow. Actually, get a mark for long, mark for narrow. Here, yeah, mark, mark, mark. Okay. Describe. Let me erase here. Describe one other structural difference between a bipedal and a quadrupedal organism for three marks. And they're saying one other, not about the pelvis. We're no longer talking about the pelvis. Now, um, you can speak about the spine here 
or you can speak about the foramen magnum so let's see so we can talk about the spine the spine is s shaped for by pedal organisms organisms and what is the shape of the spine in quadrupedal organism it's actually c-shaped it's c-shaped for quadrupedal organism okay that's us speaking about the spine or you can speak about the foramen magnum the foramen magnum magnum yeah the foramen magnum is in a more forward position in bipedal organisms organisms and in a backward position position in quadrupedal organism you write it in full guys okay so how will this be marked guys let me show you quickly now the question was asking us to describe one other structural difference so you mentioned the, st the structure in question we are talking about the spine and if we're now differentiating between how the spine is in terms of shape between the two organisms, we mentioned that it is actually S-shaped for uh, bipedal organism and it is C-shaped for the quadrupedal ones. So you don't just say the spine is S-shaped for this one and C-shaped for the other. Mention exactly the organisms that you are differentiating. Okay, the next one for mentioning that you are talking about the foramen magnum. That's fine. That's the structure, right? And you are telling us that the foramen magnum is in a more forward position in bipedal organism. That's a tick. Now the comparison there will be it's actually in a backward position in quadrupedal organism. That's another tick. Remember, you either would have answered about the spine or the foramen magnum. You didn't have to answer about both.